today's discussion is on the use of neurographic art to help with anxiety and stress relief. Um, leading our discussion today, and we're super excited about this, is Robert Jackman. Robert is an LCPC and um, is at Robert Jackman Psychotherapy. He is a psychotherapist in a private practice in St. Charles, Illinois, and he has also written three books, Healing Your Lost Inner Child, along with a companion workshop, as well as Healing Your Wounded Relationship. He sold over 25,000 books worldwide, and his work will be translated into seven languages. All are available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You can follow his YouTube channel, The Art of Practical Wisdom, and contact him through his website, which is also The Art of Practical Wisdom. I am going to be putting that information in the chat, too, so I should have said that up front, so don't worry about writing that down. That will be in the chat, so you can find all of his information there. Um, and our second presenter is Sherry Hunt. Sherry, who some of you probably already know Sherry, she is a Living Well art instructor. She teaches many classes at Living Well and she does chair site art. Most recently, she has been holding classes on neurographic art and some of you may have taken them. Um, she is amazing. So she's gonna be part of this conversation today with Robert. We also have another special guest joining the conversation today, and we're super excited about this too. Uh, it's artist in Northwestern Medicine Administrative Assistant Terrence Jones. Terrence works downtown Chicago, and he has created several pieces of art. Um, many of them are proudly hanging in Northwestern Medicine buildings as well as other hospitals. So really, really cool that he's here today. Uh, he is going to share some of his art today too. And he's also gonna share how he started doing neurographic art without even realizing it was an art form or even had a name. So that's, it's a really interesting way how this all came together. So we'll, you'll learn more about that in a bit. Um, so with no further ado, I do wanna welcome Robert and Sherry. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here today. My name is Sherry, and um, I am honored to have my friend uh, Robert here with me today. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit neurographic. We're going to, if you have a piece of paper and pen at home, you can do it with any kind of pen. You're welcome to doodle along with us. Um, we will be doodling um, as we're talking. So um, we're showing our faces now, but we're going to switch in a little bit and just have you either um, get lost in what our flow is, or um, you can be doing it while you're listening. That's great. So neurographic art is my, uh, it's my all time favorite art form right now. It was a, it can't, it, uh, it's trending. It's pretty a uh, new art form, but it's been around since 2014. And Pavel Piskarev was a Russian psychologist and architect who's come up with this. So um, he kind of, there's things on Facebook. Um, you can join different groups. Um, I've been doing it with my patients, uh, chair side art, which the benefits are crazy and we'll get into that. And then also I've been having neurographic classes virtually um, during COVID. Now we're in person here at Living Well. So i um, been doing some classes like that. Um, today, we're going to talk about the benefits of neurographic and really um, get into that. So I'm going to be asking um, Robert a few questions. We're going to just go back and forth, and then we'll be looking at Terrence's art at the end. So um, I just wanted to ask you, Robert, about um, how does neurographic art tap into the subconscious? Well, uh, first, I want to say thank you for having me here. I'm really excited. And I want to say to everyone who's uh, listening and watching, Watching. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for being such a bright light and helping so many people. We never know how we're helping others, uh, but just the smallest gesture can mean so much. Uh, so what I love about this art form is that it gives the subconscious really an outlet. So the subconscious speaks in symbols and images. So it, uh, in a very intuitive way, this allows us to begin to process things that are, are deep within. So the psychologist Carl Jung said that the, we need to, uh, until we uh, give the unconscious uh, a consciousness, it will direct our lives and we will think that it's fate. So it's so important for us to begin to um, give ourselves that permission to just have this sort of expressive art where we're putting ourselves out there. Because if we don't acknowledge what's in our subconscious, it's gonna come out in dreams. So it's gonna to try to get our attention that way. Uh, but it, it also will go into what Jung called the shadow self. 
and the shadow self is all the stuff. It's the monsters that chase us in the in the dark. It's uh, all the things that we fear. And what this allows is that uh, release of this. So, so much of this work is about releasing, it's the energy transfer. So it's, it's bringing out the unconscious into the consciousness. And what I like about it is that it's a demonstration. So anytime we write things out or we talk them out or we, we draw them out, we're, we're making that stuff that's inside of us at a deep level, we're mm -hmm. making it real. Mm -hmm. So it helps us to process it. So, so much is happening on all these different levels and layers with this work that we're not consciously aware of. And that's, that's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. And how can individuals use neurographic art as a part of their toolkit or coping skill or coping mechanism to help them um, get, get through struggles or um, diagnosis? Well, you know, going back to uh, so many of you are probably working with folks who are they're just learning of a diagnosis or they're in the, in the middle of treatment. They're going through a, a tremendous experience in their life that maybe they've never been through before. And so this process gives an outlet. It uh, allows that expression. So the, the body um, speaks in movement. Um, so this is really uh, a mindfulness movement that you're doing. So anytime we focus our mind, it's a meditation. So that's all that's all meditation really is, is, is uh, our focusing of our mind. We're focusing our intention. And I know Sherry's going to get into the process of, of using neurographic art and, and how to do it. But um, what I'd like to say is, is to not overthink it. So what I do with these sorts of, of processes is I don't explain it too much to someone that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Because when we do that, they go into their thinking mind, their exactly. logical mind, and I don't want them there. I want them to stay heart centered. Mm -hmm. So it's just about let's just start. And so give them a piece of paper, you have a piece of paper, right. and you just start drawing and this is how we do it. And you're just you're just going through the process. So you're not over explaining it, you're just like in in the process and the flow. And the reality is, is that um, the art that you're creating, um, you're you're modeling that for the person you're working with. So you're in it with them. So it's an immersive experience. So they're seeing you do it and you're like kind of screwing up or whatever. And they're like, OK, I guess I can do it, too. So that's how we need to model behavior for people, giving them permission, because so many times um, uh, people have performance anxiety. They have uh, idea of perfectionism. Um, you know, they have an idea like, oh, I need to create this. Not all of us are great artists like like Sherry or Terrence. So, you know, they, they have this sense of like, I have to make it beautiful to put it on the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And it's like, th that's not what this is about. This is about experience and experiential process where you're releasing and you're letting go. Right. So it's just diving into that deep pool. Right. So there are people that, you know, start neurographic art and they have that resistance and you can kind of see them, you know, getting a little nervous and all of that so that resistance and also that inner critic that we come to with class right so really like you said just having it come from the heart so the inner critic is always with us on our little shoulder um this is a great art form to um you know just do it at night before you um, go to bed turning off that a chatter of the day um just lighting a candle having a cup of tea so you're home right now so if you have a cup of tea with you or just you know your yeti whatever it is and you have a piece of paper and pen I'm going to switch the camera so it's on our hands and you're going to see how it works and um, be able to just watch us or take this and put this in your toolkit. OK, so I'm just going to switch this really quick. So you're going to see. Um, both of our papers. 
that's good, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so first of all, what you do with the neurographic art, I usually start with a permanent pen. Um, I like a Sharpie just because um, if I do any kind of other media on top of it, like a, a water soluble, it's gonna allow me to not have whatever the Sharpie running, right? So there's different Sharpies. There's your chisel tip, which is great if you're using a big piece or a canvas. There's just your regular fine point. And then if you're gonna add any little details, we have the ultra fine point. So I was at the grocery store the other day. It was, I think it was um, Walgreens and they had a pack. I was the happiest person ever. I've never seen the pack. It had two chisels, two of each. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even care about my groceries at that time. So these are all around. You can get them at Walgreens when you're picking up, you know, Kleenex. You can get them at um, Osco, Meyer. Sharpies are everywhere. Any kind of paper that you have works. Um, if you are using a surface like your kitchen table or dining room table, I always say put a piece of paper underneath it if you are using the permanent marker. If you're at a, um, you know, at a desk or if you're um, in waiting for a doctor's appointment or you're taking someone to a doctor's appointment, you can fit small pieces of paper. I love index card size. Post-it post -it works for this. Um, and there's also the index card that has the lines on the back of it. So usually when we start our um, neurographic piece, we write on the back of it. So with the lines, you could actually write um, a little bit and then flip it over. The only thing with that is, is if you are using a permanent marker, it will bleed through. So with the line, just gonna we're gonna write something, an intention. Use it like a ballpoint pen or a pencil if you are using that. But I love the idea of the index cards because you could keep them in a box, almost like a perpetual um, calendar. Kind of have those in a little index box. So we're gonna get started. I gave a little bit of time just telling what kind of pens and paper to use to get your own. Um, we just have a small piece of paper on the back of your paper. I do want you to write an intention, whether it's a fear, a challenge, um, an uncertainty, a discomfort in something, something that you want a boundary set. If you're manifesting, if you have a dream or if you're planning, if you're healing from something, um, some kind of rage or resentment, um, frustration, or if you're just burnt out from every day and the uncertainties of COVID or just what's gonna be happening with the surgery coming up. So just take a minute on the back and you're gonna just write um, that intention on the back. It could be good and it could be bad. It doesn't have to be um, a struggle you're having. Okay, you're gonna flip over your paper and then what you're gonna do while you're thinking about your intention, you're gonna take about 30 seconds, your pen to paper, and you're just going to go ahead and make a line the two components of neurographic are the um, organic line and the rounding, which I'll talk about in a minute. So you really wanna use your whole space, really stretch it out. We're not thinking about it. We're just letting it be loose and expressive. If there's any areas that are still white, you can continue to um, add circles or if you like hearts, you can do that. You're really filling up your space or you can continue on with another line. Your line is going to be um, ended either off the page. You're going to take your kind of a walk of uh, your line for a walk. It's either going to go off the page or it's going to end. So you're going to have a shape. OK, now the big thing about um, the neurographic, it's two components. Like I said, your, your organic line and then your intersection. So with your intersections here, you're going to take your intersections and you're going to round out them so rounding out just means almost taking a little elbow or elbow noodle and putting it right in there so some people at this point this is where they find the resistance they feel like they're you know might not be able to do this so some people just do this and they're thinking that they're just going to do it real quick this is where it becomes in that meditative state where you're just kind of breathing making sure your line is going to be rounded out but you really want to go slow and just think about it get some piano music what I, what I like about uh, doing this is I think it's very soothing to do this process. And what I thought about was, I don't know, some of you might have heard of, of feng shui, which is the Chinese art of placement. And in feng shui, uh, you know, we've all walked into a room that didn't feel comfortable at first. Uh, we're like, what's what's going on with this space? Or we walked into other spaces where it felt immediately inviting and comfortable. So in feng shui, what we do is we use plants or crystals or furniture to smooth out the corners. So corners in feng shui is where energy gets stuck. And essentially, that's what neurographic art is doing. We're smoothing out the corners, 
we're making the flow easy. So subconsciously, what's happening is we're saying, oh, I'm making this comfortable. I'm making this easy. I'm making the flow happen. And so um, that's that's where this this um, medium is working on so many different levels that we don't need to explain it to someone. It's just it's just happening naturally. So as maybe some of you are, are doing this at home with us, where you're noticing how it's just like the more you round out these spaces, it's like you can just breathe easier. It's just like there's a flow to it. Mm -hmm. And two, when you do your line, um, some of you might have um, a little shakiness with your hand, and that's okay. That's what I love about the permanent marker. The chisel tip um, can always go back and kind of clean up your jagged lines. Um, there's no right or wrong in this. It's you know just really kind of falling into the flow. So um, you can do the little elbow. Sometimes if you get a, a little bit of jagged, I take this line here and I just really like Robert said, really kind of bring it in to going to the next, okay? I do have a piece that I have finished that kind of gives you a little bit of the look on all the rounded, not all of it's finished. Um, I do like to include a little bit of thicker line here and there. So if I am going to be adding color, um, I don't swallow, I don't lose it by swallowing up the line if it's too thin. Um, and also too with mine, I like to take a, um, chisel tip and kind of frame it all with just a black frame, which is really nice. It kind of grounds my piece that way, which I really like. And again, using the chisel tip just on its side. Robert, do you find that um, this helps the situation? Like if I am working through something, if I am working through a diagnosis or if I want to let go of some kind of worry, um, things I can't control, how is this, how is this helping it? Well, I was uh, at a conference last week and, and someone mentioned about deliberate directed daydreaming and they weren't talking about neurographic art, but essentially that's what this is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the daydreaming. It's the just going into a space where you're you're just letting yourself uh, go into that flow. So the intensity of um, your life being uh, turned upside down, getting a diagnosis or um yourself or a loved one uh, receiving that uh, diagnosis there's an, an immediate fear that comes in very naturally that fear comes in and so this process what we're doing is we're um making what might be chaotic in our outer world we're making well i, I can control this right now mm -hmm. what's going on in the paper i can control this i can i can fill in and and make these spaces uh, curvy and flowing. I can't control the process necessarily, but I can control how I'm looking at the process, mm -hmm. how I'm experiencing it. So the work that you're doing in in this in this process is in, in this medium is this is the journey. So like watching Sherry work so effortlessly doing this work, uh, this is the journey. So the the finished product, you know, can be can be beautiful, but this real the process is the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't sometimes, and that's where our inner critic is going to get in the way and just be like, oh, mine's not good enough. I'm not, you know, good enough to the person next to me. And it's really all about the flow and the process. We don't want to carry um, or worry so much about the product. Um, it's really just about the process and it's amazing. I've had patients where I've done chair side art um, and they've come up to me like in the in the waiting room like Sherry, Sherry, oh my gosh, thank you so much for showing me the neurographic art. I wasn't able to sleep. I was worried. I'm on all day for my kids, but yet I can do this, you know, 15 minutes before I go to bed and I can really get a good night of rest. So it's really, it, you know, it's not only helping um, folks with cancer, patients with cancer, it's it's helping um, so many others, um, those with anxiety. Anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I also think that, you know, someone who has ADHD or mm -hmm. a patient who's on the spectrum, that this would be a great way to help focus all of this sort of scattered energy that they carry and really help them bring bring it in. So like what we're doing, we're doing this as we're talking 
And that's really effective for teenagers or people on the spectrum or ADHD folks, because a lot of times they have a hard time with direct eye contact during communication. And so this gives you you both, the practitioner and, and the patient, uh, a focus to do. So it allows you kind of to kind of like drift into that space. Mm -hmm. So someone who's like highly dysregulated, who just doesn't know what to do with everything they're feeling, this would be a great way to help them like, you know, get into that zone. Mm -hmm. When you're finished with your curving and your, um, your lines, you can start to fill in some of your um, spaces with different lines, um, doing, you know, black and white, um, little checkerboard. Um, I love the lotus pod, so I always add circles. Um, and then I dig, dig my negative space and I, I color it in black. You can also add color. The main thing about neurographic too, you want it to be meditative. So you want it to kind of have that flow. So some people will take, you know, this little bit and then color that in and do the lines. I really want you to finish the whole idea of rounding first and then doing the next layer, whether it's, you know, filling in some of your spaces or filling in with color. Now I can always um, go back to, if I start a little bit of color, I can always add um, some lines to this afterwards. If I feel like this is too much of a big purple space, I can do that. If I'm thinking about something and I'm manifesting and I'm dreaming, I can think about adding some different um, things into my shape. I do have a, um, a patient who the prompt was a broken heart and this was her neurographic art at the end of it. So you can see the lines um, creating the brokenness of the hearts, but yet look at the light and the growth around it with what she added as far as her doodles and details and layers. She also did one um, using a, a spiral line and then inside of it, that's where she did the neurographic. And I love the idea of a mandala doing the neurographic, kind of working from the inner and um, kind of having it released. She released with all these little spirals, that continuing um, ever-changing line. Um, and just the piece that she found in this is really great with the, the lotus flower and um, the repeating lines. So you can do a lot of things inside of your shape um, I did talk about the mandala. Here's another example of this. Um, and this is just taking eight different, shape, um, different shapes of circles, like concentric circles, you'll get your shapes on. If you don't have a compass at home, everyone sometimes worries about that. Just use um, a mug, a paper plate, a saucer, a bowl, and get your circles on. And then you just have your lines. And then within your lines, that's when you're just gonna kind of start in the center and release out. And inside, I kind of did a little doodle. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with the neurographic art. And then, like I said, I really like to um, add color. So you can do something like that just with markers. You can use crayons, watercolor, anything that you have at home, right? It's not anything about going out and saying, I can't do this because it's not what I have at home. If you don't have watercolor, you can use food color and you know really make it something that you can do. And it's great if you want to do it with a family. Um, it's a great way to bring people together. Yeah, I think another process that you can do, I, I talk about in my work and in my books uh, about symbolic letters. And so this process is where you're you're writing a letter uh, to uh, you could be writing it to whatever illness you're going through or a, a family issue relationship issue. So you're writing fast and furious. You're you're um, uh, contacting within yourself all of contacting with all of these emotions. And so that's a lot of intense work. And so afterwards, you could actually do this. Uh, after you've done those healing uh, symbolic letters to just deepen the work and to give your your mind a little rest like I, I normally say to take a walk afterwards or whatever the the other thing that you, you know you can you can teach uh, folks to uh, self-regulate in the way of uh, before during and after uh, for them to check in with themselves as far as um, let's say zero to ten how they're feeling right now. Let's say 10 being really intense so that they could say, well, I'm, I'm feeling eight, I'm really anxious. And so that's the measurement before getting in, doing this art and then, then have them do the artwork. 
and and um, do this process and then check in and say, okay, well, how are you feeling now after you've done this? And and teach them about self-regulation, teach them how they can use this as, as part of a process to help go deeper. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea too. I've done it with a migraine, starting with a migraine and then just feeling the tension and everything kind of release. Mm -hmm. Same thing mm -hmm. with your stress, um, really feeling that um, from the beginning to the end. I love the idea too, like you said, um, Robert, about um, writing a letter about it. You can also include words um, in your art um, if you are looking for peace, if you're looking for love. After you um, do some color, you can write those words and have those symbols within. So it's not just about doodling. You can actually put those words on paper. Um, if I'm feeling pain, I can create a line of, um, you know, just a hard line it could be red it could be zigzag whatever um that feels to you and just kind of get it out with that expressive line um so you can have that the curvy if and i am making a line and i'm thinking about something really starting at the center and really going off that idea of your line going off the page is going to allow you to let go of your fears and let go of your worries and just kind of go off the page and remember we haven't said anything about breathing we all forget to breathe really breathing through this exercise. Meditation is all about breathing. This too is all about breathing, hearing yourself um, inhale and then exhale. So, so you, you can easily take six breaths uh, or breaths in through your nose to the count of six and releasing through your mouth to the count of six. So you could, you could begin, you know, set your intention and then just uh, begin that breathing process as you're now getting into this work. And then that's that's going to really regulate your physiology very quickly. So it, it's it's a great way to kind of check in with yourself and give yourself that that little breathing space. So you know we're we're spending time doing this now, but um, I'm wondering if someone can let's say start this and uh, like like what you're doing then. Uh, check in later, like mm -hmm. throughout the day, they have five minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I have five minutes is, you know, almost like a meditation, right? You know, quick meditation, right? I think that's a great point. Um, sometimes we, you know, we have to run and go get the kids, we have an appointment, whatever we have, we're in a hurry, right? So I, I say to people, if you leave it out on the table, you'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. So rather than tucking away in your briefcase or putting it in your, you know, composition book or your sketchbook, have it out. So it's there, it's inviting. It's almost like an embrace for later in the day when you're going to really want it. Um, and it could be a little place on the dining room table. You don't have to have a create an art space. It's just as little space for you. Put a candle, know that that's going to be there for later. Um, just, you know, whatever your, um, whatever music you know just kind of set up a little space for you um mm -hmm. and like i said it doesn't have to be anything um that you know you might not already have so yeah i think that that so many people um want to do things right like mm -hmm. we were talking about the inner mm -hmm. critic before and it's just giving yourself that permission to to let this go knowing that um that again this is the journey so we're going through the journey of creating the art of expressing ourselves. And uh, what I find is that people are processing as they're drawing. So a lot of times after they draw, they'll come and say, oh, well, now now I recognize this this happened in my life or I recognize uh, that I've been carrying this. Why have I been carrying this? And so what they can do is then go back to like I wrote hope on mine. They can go back and say, OK, well, now what's your relationship to that intention that you set when you began this work? You know, so it's another way to use it as a tool uh, uh, with helping a patient sort of go through and say, oh, if they, let's say they wrote fear down there or something. It's like, OK, well, what is your relationship now to fear? Because so much of you know our healing uh, revolves around uh, perspective. And when we lose perspective, that's when we really get in the weeds and that's when we um, become very disconnected from ourselves and we just enter into a place of fear. And so this is a way, again, of bringing us into the present moment of focusing this, you know, mindful meditation, this movement that we're doing, and it's going to help process that. Mm -hmm.
Yep. And it's really just um, falling into, you know, gently into the creative flow. Um, if you have, a, you know, kids at home, if you've got phones ringing, you know, make sure you turn off your phones. Um, tell your kids, this is what I need right now. I need 15 minutes. Give yourself permission to, this is like self-care, right? You know, so really give your, yourself permission to do this. So um, I think I want to um, introduce Terrence mm -hmm. right now. Is there anything else you want to say about this, Robert? No, I think we're doing great. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm going to um, switch this around a little bit here and... Um, a funny thing happened. I was doing a um, interview for a wellness um, kind of segment for Northwestern, and um, I came back a few days later after the weekend, and I got an an email from Terrence Jones saying, "Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you." And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to have it go from there, Terrence. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Welcome. Thank you so very much for having me. I saw this. Um, uh, neurographic piece in the header on the NM um, connections page, I believe. Yeah, and it's right here. <laughs> yes, and it absolutely blew my mind. I'm like, wow. So this is actually a thing, you know. So I've been doing these things called, I call them, brain clouds. I've been calling them brain clouds the whole time because it's just me putting what's in my thoughts out on paper or on canvas or however but i've been doing these since i was a, a kid and i started to you know just um in times where i'm stressed or if i am dealing with something i always found myself doodling and filling in these doodles a lot of times it what i was what's going on in my life is incorporated in these because i use words terms, phrases, um, you know, and it just started to look beautiful to me. And and during the process, I'm letting it go. You know, mm -hmm. I feel better after I've, I've done. Like this thing that I started with, it's gone. I didn't even know that that was even a thing, but I just been doing it. So um, how I got to do the, the pieces at Northwestern is I was at my lunch break doodling once and one of the physicians saw the piece and she's like, well, you know, I'd like one of these. Can you do one of these for me? So I, I did one for her big and had it framed. I incorporated some of her um, culture in there, her religion and culture and brought it back to her and she purchased it. And she gave me a, a nice little uh, price for it. I didn't ask for anything, but she just, you know, and then it just started from there. They saw this one and then it one of the other hepatologists asked for one. I did a bigger one. And by word of mouth, it spread all over the, the um, hospital. Now I have uh, pieces in five or six buildings in, I would say, maybe 20 or 30 offices on campus. So it just started growing that way. I didn't even know that it was a thing at the time. And right now, what I'm doing with... Um, my church is, my wife and I are in a um, marriage group, and we sometimes invite couples to the house for couple night paint events, mm -hmm. and we do these brain clouds. Mm -hmm. What I find, one of the pastors, two, a couple of the pastors told me that uh, all the things that they're doing, this is one of the most relaxing experiences they have had. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know that. I'm, I'm, I was just glad that I could, you know, offer the space for them to relax. I know what they're doing, ministering all over the world. And it was just, you know, all came together in that way. And the pieces I have at Northwestern, I often have people come into the lobby. They ask about it or they're standing and they're looking and they're putting things together, the shapes, and they're seeing different things. I'll just walk up and start talking to them about you know, what they see. And then later on, I'll reveal to them that I'm the artist. And you'd be surprised how people connect with these pieces. They've always been the most drawing form of art that I do. I do a whole bunch of different styles of art, but that has been the mo one of the most drawing ones. And for me, 
it is absolutely the most therapeutic one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Ter- Terrence, I, I love your story because um, you were really young, who I referenced earlier. He, he called uh, what he called the collective unconscious. Mm-hmm. And I believe what you were doing is you were tapping into the collective unconscious with this work. You were, yeah. you were just very naturally drawn to this. Yes. Um, and it's such a beautiful expression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Absolutely. I have come to enjoy watching people come into the lobby where I work because there are two huge ones, four foot by four foot ones in the lobby where I work. Is this one of them here? The one that you were that you sent me? I'm going to show that one. This piece right here is a a piece I donated. Well, not donated. I entered into a um, an art contest they were having for Nurses Week. So all of those terms are in there related to nurses and what they do. And you have the caduceus in the middle, which is like a nursing symbol and all of those words and terms. And then the color for me and the flow of it and how busy it is, is reflective of uh, what nurses do every day. I've worked, I've been working with them for 20 years and I see there's this like multitasking throughout the day. And at the same time, they're kind while they're doing it. And, and patient with people. And it's just, and this piece did win um, most inspirational in the contest. So, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Terrence, did you also want to share um, other pieces? I think you'd mentioned. Yes, I have a few pieces. I'm going to, I'm going to try to share my screen really quick. Okay. And then I can, I can show, let's see how, if I can do this. I can I can see how how people just uh, really relate to your work, Terrence, and because there's such a love in your work, mm-hmm. and integrity and strength, and there are just so many things I see in your work that are just it's just beautiful. Thank the one you. that I was holding up that held the award was it um, watercolor marker uh, alcohol inks? What did you use besides the uh, black line? That is all acrylic on canvas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wow. all acrylic on canvas. The, the background here that you have is so like flowing. It's just really, it, it's, it's, it almost looks like alcohol ink to me. So that's why I was. It's yeah. it's uh text. It's te- well, I used um an acrylic medium and I I mixed it with acrylic paint and I poured. Okay. For the oh. background. Yeah. So and like, this is um a piece that's hanging at Northwestern. This is Elizabeth Blackwell. She's the first female physician in the United States. Um, the chief of gastroenterology tapped me to do this piece during uh, Women's Week last year. Mm. So it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And the colors, I love the complementary colors in it. And oh my and god. And this was this is a pour, and then I used the, the textures that naturally the, the the shapes that naturally formed in the pour to highlight with color. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is called the mind of COVID. I was at, during COVID, I was working from home for a year. Mm -hmm. So when they sent me home in, in, in March, a little over a year, when they sent me home in in March of that year, the beginning, I pulled out this canvas and I started putting things in it that I was hearing from the news Mm -hmm. reports and from the CDC and all of these things. And just how I was feeling at the time it took, I worked on this for an entire year. Wow. This also too is hanging at Northwestern. I then, once we returned to work, donated it at the last year's gala at the Digestive Health Foundation. I'll do this um, cardiology themed one. Look at that! Wow. wow. So oh if gosh. you can look at it, you can see the heart in there. Yes. Yes. So this one is uh, Dr. Vorovich. She's a, a a heart surgeon here at Northwestern commissioned me to do this piece and she gave me some personal things she wanted in there like her son her children's names and stuff like this but for the most part she just let me go Mm -hmm. yeah and I I had a whole bunch of fun creating this one Mm -hmm. this is a neuroradiology theme one that is now at Northwestern in the um, neuroradiology department lobby Um, I'm going to view it and zoom out a little bit. Look at this. I love the color. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. 
Yo, so you see, talented, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. You guys, I'm telling you, like a light bulb came on when I saw this, what you were doing. And I understand why I come to work. I get to work at the time I get 830, sometimes nine o'clock and people come up earlier. I have come to into the lobby many times and seen people coming from different parts of the campus to watch this artwork in the lobby. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Someone's I'm- told them, oh, it's over there. So and they've come. So I understand the concept of how it's working and how it's connecting um, yeah. the neurons and, and stuff like on that. A, on yeah. Subconsciously. Yeah, yeah, subconsciously. Yeah, subconsciously. I love it. I love that our um, universe has collided a little bit. So, so <laughs> nice to have you today, um, Terrence. And thank you for um, sharing your amazing, amazing artwork. Yeah. Truly, so, so truly, yes. Thank you guys oh for goodness. having me. Thank you guys for having me. I, um, I would love to, to, you know, find out more about you guys' program. If I could be involved in any way in the future, I would love to be a part of it. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, indeed. We'll be in touch, my friend. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So um, we're going to do a little wrap up. Before we do, I want to just mention the books that Sue mentioned early on that um, Bob has written. He's a psychotherapist, but also an author. Um, He has Healing Your Wounded Relationship. Um, with a beautiful cover. I love that. And then there is um, Healing Your Lost Inner Child. Um, This one with the Karen on top of it. I love the rocks, the balance. And then it has a workbook that goes along with it. So So, so my books, there's a lot that's packed into my books. I, I really think of them as working books, meaning that I give a lot of uh, examples and stories, but I also give exercises in the book. So a lot of people, a lot of their comments on Amazon are like, you know, be prepared to work. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's my idea that that you get something out of out of this time that you're spending in enhancing yourself and um, of bringing some healing into your life. Mm-hmm. And all of those are included. The information for that to get any of those are in the chat room that um, Sue has provided. So well, thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you, Robert, for being here. You're welcome. Thank and you your, all. Your words and Terrence, and thank you for sharing your art. And thank you for taking the time, all of you, to um, be here today and um, make a neurographic part of your um, life, hopefully. So enjoy and uh, have a wonderful day and a great weekend to all of you.